tier list of 2023 of games that I've played. So we're going to be doing a tier list of 2023 of all the games that I've played on stream, including single player games, co-op games, multiplayer games, in between these games, games that I have finished, games that I haven't finished. Um, and we're going to talk about them a little bit before we end our day because it's almost 7 p.m. and I need to go at like 7.30. So let's go. Let's talk a little bit about it. Okay. So. I actually, Baldur's Gate is the first one, and I'm gonna tell you something. I don't know where I should put Baldur's Gate, but I'm not gonna put it on S tier, even though it's a great game. I recognize how great of a game it is, but myself as a personal experience, like in my personal experience, I really liked it, but it's not an entire like world that I get super into 100% because I feel, I still, I feel very lost. And I'm still very in the beginning of the game, so I cannot rank it high. Okay. I cannot rank it high. So... I'm gonna... For now, I'm gonna leave Baldur's Gate 3 in A tier. Just because I recognize how good of a game it is, and how nice the cinematics are, and how beautiful everything is. And how much fun I have with Connor and Rix's. But... Nonetheless, it's not a game that I have that I'm not 100% into, so I'm gonna leave it in the A tier, if it makes sense. League of Legends, I'm not gonna rank it because it's not worth it. Like, it's it's a game that it's been here for a very very long time. I barely streamed it. I feel like I played a lot off stream, but I think that like off stream, it's fun to a certain degree but on stream it's just annoying i don't like it streaming it that much as a personal experience and like looking back to all of that i felt while playing league on stream but it's been a game that has been here since the beginning it was the game that i started streaming so i i i i, I know it's a shitty game but i know it's a good game and i owe the game a lot but i don't want to rank it I feel like it's been too long for me to be able to rank it. Although I know I'll be ranking all the other games from League of Legends probably. A Highland Song. Next one. We played a Highland Song because the devs did give us the, the key. The studio gave us the key to play it. Which was very nice. I love the fact that it's Scottish. But um, when it comes to a Highland Song, it really like... It's a very nice rhythm game. I feel like just... The way that I've played it and due to the levels of anxiety that I've been I was feeling, I, I felt like the game got eventually too frustrating because I knew it would take like five hours. So once I passed the five hour mark, I started freaking out a little bit, and that's something that I need to improve as myself as a streamer. Like I wanna play small games, I wanna like I don't wanna like be stuck too much in a place because of you guys, because then you guys feel frustrated and then you stop watching my stream, so I put that pressure on me, even though no one puts that pressure on myself, on, like on me. It's, it's just me, myself, and I, mostly. But I really like the game. I, I couldn't understand the story much. Actually, it's not something that hooked me a lot. But I really like the story. Uh, I really like the rhythm of the game. I really like how you can find the exploration part. It's very fun. But I really, really, really recommend this game to many people who really like indie games. I really, really like it, okay? But I'm gonna put it on C for now. I'm really torn between B and C because I really like the game. But I think I would have more fun playing it off stream. Because I would have more time to explore. I feel like there's not a lot of like games that are focused on the on the Scottish culture and things like that. It's 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 very little that I do find. And therefore that really I really liked it. But I'm gonna leave it for C. A way out. Okay, a way out is made by Azelight, which is my favorite one of my favorite video game studios they are the same developers of it takes two and brothers and brothers a tale of two sons is my all-time favorite game one of the top three and i really liked it i played it with link it was very fun we had a bunch of fun we played it into streams i didn't feel pressured at all i won that's all i can say i won and uh i really like it and this is where i get very troubled i want to put it at eight here because I don't feel like it deserves an S tier, but I don't feel like Baldur's Gate and A Way Out deserve to be in the same tier. Because I didn't feel the same playing the game. Therefore, I either put A Way Out on S tier, or I put Baldur's Gate in B tier. 
because I don't feel like I should put them in the same spot. Just because I like the way out way more than I did like Baldur's Gate. For now, I'm gonna do like this. But the thing is, the f the way that I feel, it's not about like how different ga the games are compared to themselves. There are games that I'm gonna, they are totally not the same, but like the way that I feel, like the excitement that I wanna be playing more. Like Baldur's Gate, unfortunately, is not a game that I, I look forward to play it, but I didn't look forward to play it as much as I did with A Way Out. I, I, I will either like, then I'll do it like that. If a, if a way out is not an S tier, then Baldur's Gate is not an A tier. But for me, what makes a game is the impact that it makes on you. And Baldur's Gate hasn't made an impact as much as I did for many people in the community. But for me, it's also the experience. Like, there are games that simply mark you. So I'm gonna leave it like that. But that's why the reason I don't put a way out on S tier, it's because the game didn't mark me as much. It made a mark or an impact way bigger than Baldur's Gate 3 has. So far, it could change. I'm still gonna keep playing it. Alice Madness Returns, I really like that game, but I'm gonna put it on D. I really like it, but I'm gonna put it on D. No, I like the game. The game, like, is fun, but it's a very old game. I, re I really like everything about it. But there you go, it didn't have that much of an impact on me. There was another Alice in Wonderland game that already had a bigger impact on me, and I've been playing this for so long. Cerise and the Lost Demon, I'm gonna put it on S. It's a great game. It's a great game. I had so much fun. I always look forward to playing it. It's a beautiful game. The story is so cool. I cried. Uh, even though that you crying doesn't make a game, because I also cried on a, uh, on a way out and it's not an S tier. Bramble. I'm gonna put, put Bramble right next to a Highland song. Bramble was so cool. Bramble was cool, so was a Highland song. There you go, total different games. For me, the impact was exactly the same. The same way that Bramble was very focused on like the Swedish thingies. The fact that it was kind of a horror game and the way that it made me feel, it wasn't like as good. And for me, the Highland song also having the Scottish factor next to it makes it just as important as Bramble was for me for having the Swedish like context. I think both of the games like made me feel so good because it had like both of like the Nordic part and then the Scottish part. And Bramble, it is it has a good story. A, like I don't I, honestly, I don't even like the story. I don't like the story of the main the main characters. Bramble is just good for the fables that it tells. I'm gonna put Cocoon in tier S. It's a great game. It's just overall, it's a great puzzle game. I did it in an entire stream. I'm gonna put Coffee Talk on C. Coffee Talk, I'm gonna put next to a Highland Song in Bramble because it's a game that I really, really liked. I really liked the story on Coffee Talk, but for some reason it didn't. I don't know. It's like too monotone. It's a, it's a, it's a legit a talking game. But Coffee Talk too, though. I'm gonna put it next to Baldur's Gate <laughs> because. They brought a little bit of more spookiness, a little bit more tension, a little bit of more like story that he wanted to know. Although the end of the game is a little bit nye. Coral Island. It's a great game. I always want to play it. It's so fun. It's like Stardew Valley. Coral Island is the mix as if Stardew Valley, Palia, and Animal Crossing had a baby. It's a great game. And because of that, I'm going to put Stardew Valley next to it. I love this type of games. I have so much fun. And even like putting Coral Island and Stardew Valley next to each other doesn't make me happy because I feel like they are not the same. I feel like I like Coral Island a little bit more because there are so many things that Coral Island has that Stardew Valley doesn't. Coral Island has so much more than Stardew Valley has, but Stardew Valley is one of like the beginning, the beginning of like what these games are. I think a lot of people, like, it's not the beginning. There, there were other games that started that are very close to Stardew Valley. Well, like, I don't know, I feel like Stardew Valley is what introduced me to this type of games that makes me love it so much. And I think the reason why I can play Coral Island is because I already played Stardew Valley. And there are so many things that I know that it's a kind of a reference from it. So, yeah. Cult of the Lamp, one of my favorite games, top five of my favorite games. I really, really, really liked Cult of the Lamp. Next to it, Darkest Dungeon. Next to Stardew Valley. It's, it's an A-tier game. I love Darkest Dungeon. It's so fun to play it on stream. I, I have way more fun playing it on stream because I can interact with you and I can like make you guys the characters. There's like so many things in it that I just loved it that it's just gonna be there. Detective Pikachu Returns, you're gonna, gonna go on D. It's not something that really like, it's fun. It's like the detective part, but for that I can just play Phoenix, right? 
Yes, it's the Pokemon universe, which I'm not, in, and unfortunately, the biggest fan. It's not that I'm no, not a fan of Pokemon. I really do little, do no, no little about Pokemon. And I'm, for someone who had never played Detective Pikachu and for someone who never had watched any Detective Pikachu movie, watching Pikachu talking was disturbing. <laughs> Especially because I had the game in Japanese, so he was speaking in Japanese. It was very interesting. It was an interesting reaction. Either way, really liked it. It's a funny game for a detective. There you go to play off stream. It's a game that I would totally play on the trip or if I had nothing to do, that's something that I would play and I was very interested in. But I felt like in the first mission, oh my God, they kept it rolling. I don't know, but we dropped it. We didn't complete it, but it was a good game. Great game as well, Dordogne. Dordogne, I love that game. I cried a lot. Beautiful watercolor world vibe. I love it. I have the gameplay on my YouTube. It's, it's great. It was a great game. It, it was a very good game. I'm really sad that it didn't get more recognition because it was such a good game. Fashion Dreamer, I'm gonna put it on D. It's not a game that I feel like it's streamer friendly much, but it's a game that I've already played off stream because it's fun to play it off stream. I love dressing up the... <laughs> it's just like a kid's game, to be fair. It's amazing for the type of game that it is. I think it's cute, but uh, it, it's not a game for streaming. I mean, it is a game for streaming. Every game is streamable, but you guys know. Like, it, it, it was a cute game. Hi-Fi Rush. I would rather not rank it yet. I played very little of the game. And what I played about on the game was when I was having a lot of trouble with my computer. So I had a very bad um, experience streaming the game. Because um, I would like to have to play the game more. To have a better and solidified opinion about it so that's the reason why i'm not gonna give it a rank because i feel the game is very good or maybe i just had very high expectations for it because everyone kept talking so well about hi-fi rush but there's something that i feel like i still need to know or maybe i need to play it with a controller and i can't because the xbox doesn't like uh, doesn't allow my my controller from nintendo switch to be compatible it's not compatible which surely makes sense but it's unfortunate because i don't have money to buy another controller hogwarts legacy i don't know where to rank it i don't know if i should put it on c or b i think it's a great game because it is i think i'm gonna put it on b next to Baldur's gate 3 because like while Hogwarts Legacy did call me for more, for more information, I feel like the game just lost me in, in the middle of it. I think the game just kind of lost me. Like, it was great graphic-wise for you to like live Hogwarts Legacy, but I don't know if I should put it on B or C, to be fair. I'm really torn. It was a great game, but it, it didn't do any type of impact on me. I, I just... I'm gonna leave it on B. Ip, I liked it. I'll put it on C. No, no, I'm not gonna put it next to Highland Song and Bramble. I, I, I wouldn't compare it. It's a great game, very short. It's like a two to three hour long game. I think Ib would be on D. Kirby was fun, I liked it. <laughs> it was very fun, I think for a Kirby game. My first fully played Kirby game was very fun. Once again, I'm trying to like mostly rate according to like what I thought about the game and how I felt streaming it, okay guys? Mage Seeker, it's a great game. I didn't end it though. It got so boring. I feel like everybody got boring of the game. It's a beautifully pixel art game. Beautiful. The references, like the characters are beautifully made. I love it. The RPG style of it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But there was something missing in the game. There was something missing. I was so excited for this game and the game like had so much story in the beginning that made me so f fall in love with it so, so much. I don't think no one that I know actually finished the game. We did do the Morgana boss and after that it was just so boring and the controllers weren't intuitive. Like it was, uh, there was like nothing that would pull me to keep going. Probably there's a huge turnaround, the same way that Sea of Stars had. There is a, like a moment in Sea of Stars that the game just like, whoop, you know, and you're like, oh shit, the story, like there's a plot twist, you know? Like there, there probably there was one in Mage Seeker, but maybe they should have done it sooner. There was like something missing. There was something missing. Omori, I'm not gonna rank it. I didn't play the game fully. Um, I didn't see the message. There was something I was too scared all the time. I don't want to rank it. I feel like the game doesn't deserve to have a bad rank because I was scared all the time. Because the, heart is the art is beautiful. 
but I don't feel like I feel like the game is actually really good but I feel like I myself cannot like I had so much fun in so many moments of the game until like the scary part started you know and I really did freak out you guys remember how anxious I got phasmophobia I'm not gonna rank it either I've been playing it for quite a while it doesn't make sense for me to to rank it Texas uh sure didn't catch me, not very intuitive in the beginning, although once it gets intuitive, it's just a game that it was great for like three weeks and it... Sea of Stars? S tier. You guys know how much I love that game. That game was like one of my favorite games. That This game was the gem of 2023 for me. You guys know it. I loved it. I, I really did love it. Sea of Stars was great. I don't even care about the plot twist and how I almost got bored. I think like the game is so beautiful that I didn't even remember, for that I forgot that I was losing like the storyline and all of it. So yeah. But Sea of Stars, you guys know that I really like Sea of Stars. I'm waiting for my, my Sea of Stars plushie. <laughs> Song of Nunu, I really liked it. But for 30 euros, <laughs> I really like the game. Like guys, I really love the game. Everything about it was, I've. it's a game that I've wanted for so long. It has the puzzle games, it has everything. And I'm really torn if I should put it on A or B, but for 30 euros or 40 or whatever you're paying for that game, to play it in five hours, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it, don't spend your money. It's a beautiful game. The interactions are beautiful. But I did like what? I did like between 60 to 80% completion. It was like everything was very intuitive. The game was beautifully made. I loved the 3D. I loved everything about it. I loved the storyline. You get so hooked in the entire story. There's all these new characters showing up or re-showing up. Like, it's so, so great. And that's why I'm gonna put it on A because I really liked it, but it's not worth your money. I'm so glad I have it and I'm so glad I can replay it because I know that I will forget about the story and I love it. But they should have made the game longer. They should have made it longer. It's not that it wasn't worth it. The game is worth your money in a way if it was like 10 euros cheaper or if it was like four hours longer or a little bit more than four hours or something like that you know like the game is worth it the game is amazing or maybe i'm just too much of a pro gamer yeah kind of a get it on sale type of game alex that that's great get it on sale like enjoy the game get but get it on sale don't don't spend the entire money on it storyteller great game honestly s tier game one of my favorite games that i played this year on stream Took, took us two streams, I know. It's a game if people ask me like, oh, what, what are your favorite games? games? I'm not gonna say Storyteller because uh, I will forget. I, I, I will probably say quicker that I, I like A Sea of Stars or A Cult of the Lamp or Ori and the Blind Forest or Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Probably Storyteller won't be there, but it's one of my favorite games. This is the genre of games that I like to play. These are the type of story games that I like to play, the puzzles, the type of thinking i just wish they made it longer i want a dlc i want an expansion something i want a storyteller too i don't know i want more <laughs> it was so good i loved it so much super liminal great game but okay i'll, I'll leave it here I, i'll put it on c it's a good game but it's not worthy of putting on d but there was something about yeah yeah it's a c uh, there's like not much that i can tell you it's a funny game it's a what the fuck game. I had a bunch of anxiety because of it, but yeah. I don't know. It's a great game. You know what? Super Mario Bros. Wonder wasn't that much of a wow game as I thought it would be. I think there are better Super Mario games. I think there are way better ones. And that's why I dropped it. I don't even know if I should put it on C or D. And you know what? Team Fight Tactics, I'm gonna put it on B. I've been having fun streaming it because I understand the set better. Let it change the set and I'll have another opinion about it. You know, in a way I want to put it on no rank because I think this is one of those games that I'm just like, eh, it's just one more. Like there, there is nothing on TFT that I really like, but I, I do spend a lot of my time there now. Like lately I've been spending a lot of my time in TFT. But, um, and I think it's a game that allows me to talk to you guys. I'm still thinking if that Super Mario should be on C or D. Thirsty Suitors, it was a fun game. You guys know that I was probably not gonna keep going with the game. I'm not gonna hide it. You guys know that I try to be as transparent as I can. And Thirsty Suitors, was it a game? Like, it was fun, like the concept. I think the way that they made it wasn't just hooking. The game was fun. The cooking part was fun. Like, the skating part for me was a little bit unnecessary. I don't know why they put it in the game. I think the game would have been nicer without the skater part. Just with the fights and with the X's, that would have been fun. The skater part for me didn't make sense. And yeah, uh, eh. Sure. Trackmania no rank. 
because I, I just started playing it. I'm gonna put Super Mario's on D. And I'm gonna put Tunic on C. Because it's not one of my favorite games, but I love the heart style and I want to keep trying it. I don't know if I should put Tunic on C or if I should put it on no rank because I kind of don't want to rank it yet. I would like to give it a, a bit of more of a shot, but I think I'm going to leave it on C. I think I think it's a, I, I, it's a cu very cute game. I really like that game. Valhalla. I'm going to put it on C too. It was fun. I think the story was hooking, but not as hooking as Coffee Talk. It was a first like type of dialogue game that we went to and it was pretty nice. Valorant S tier. Sorry guys. <laughs> it's such a funny game to stream. It's so funny to stream it. It's so funny to stream. People are so funny. You you find the most random people there. I think one of like the best memories I got on 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 stream are from Valorant. Finally a horror game on S tier. 100%. I love Valorant. I really like it. I haven't played it in months yet though, for now uh, now but Maybe in 2024 I'll play even less Valorant, who knows, but Valorant has been has been has been a very good game. Yeah, Valorant honest year. It's a game that like makes sense on my stream a lot. Venba, it's a B. I think Dordang was way better. I think Dordang and Venba like were the games that I played one after the other and I really liked Venba, but I feel like it didn't have much of an impact as I thought it would have. While Dordang had a very big impact, but it's also because of my background. Venba for me, it's nothing, not not something that I relate to as much as I did with Dordang because Dordang is a relationship with like the girl's grandma, and I don't know, it's different. The Bible Can High, it's an A-tier game. I really like the game. I really like the story. But honestly, no, I leave it there. I'm not gonna put an next to Hogwarts Legacy, or should I? I'm torn between Volcano High being A or B. Because I really like the game, but in a way, this game, I'll leave it. It was fun. No, I'm gonna put it on B. I'm gonna put it on B. I like the game, it made a huge impact on me, but not as much. Like, I really like the game, but I feel like the D&D part of it kind of ruined it. The first time that they did it was great, the second and third time was just like too much. I feel like they shouldn't have added D&D as much as I did. The music was mu beautiful, sang like an angel, but everything about it like was great, the arts was beautiful. The way that they did the story was like emotional and all, but I feel like as well the relationships weren't as good as for example Life is Strange, like there wasn't that much of an, a connection as much um, as I would like to. Why You Aware was a totally A tier game, if not an S tier, I'm actually torn if I should put it on on S tier. It was very fun. I really like playing Why You Aware. We played it on like what, two to three streams? And maybe then I'm actually thinking about putting Hogwarts Legacy in... Baldur's Gate 3, especially Baldur's Gate 3 on the no rank tier, because like, honestly, I feel like I played very little of Baldur's Gate 3. I did like, what, two to three streams of Baldur's Gate 3 with Connor and Rixes. I'll put ba Baldur's Gate 3 on no rank. A tier, we were here, uh, Expeditions, Friendship Expeditions was a great game. Great, great game. I'm gonna put We Were Here on B. And We Were Here too on C. We Were Here was great. I had a lot of fun. Like, We Were Here expeditions were so fun with Bali. Like, the game was so fun. I played all of the three with Bali. We Were Here was great, too. It was, like, the first one. And Bali also got the scary part, so it wasn't, like, anxiety-inducing for me. Besides, the, like, the person running through the corridors. But, like, We Were Here, too, for some reason, it just didn't... I just couldn't wait for, wait for the moment to end, you know? And Johan, uh, the Parhelion, was... Honestly, I would even put it there. And this one, I could even put it there. And I'm gonna put Super Mario on C. Okay. I'm looking at it, and I think I think this is it. I think I think this is a tier list. For me, it makes sense. I'm gonna get really roasted about like because people a lot. Of, I will post it on my Twitter. I'm gonna get people like being like, "Why did you do it?" I'm just gonna like. Well, I'll, uh, since this will go to YouTube, I'll, I'll just put the link of YouTube and be like, "Well, here you go." Because, like, the reason why I do this, and I'm gonna say it a last time, these are the games that I played in 2023. It's, like, more, like, how did I feel when I streamed it? Was it something that I wanted to keep streaming? Was it a game that I was like, oh my god, I want to keep playing it a lot, a lot, a lot? Uh, how did I feel at the end of it? Like, and then, of course, I take into consideration the graphics and things like that. I feel like uh, there's, like, this is me in a streaming mindset. How did I feel playing the games? 
Like, there are certain games that, you know, and there are other games that were very nice. There are games that I didn't end and I feel like they are not worth it yet to be ranked. In my experience, because I played them very, very little or I played with a really uh, bad mindset that I feel like it's not worth it for the game. But yeah, it's like how much did the impact the game impact on me and how did the game like, you know, so for me, for me, this is it. Nessa gave the amazing idea of me making the list public and you guys could make a little list on how good it felt watching. So feel free to fill it up. I'm I'll, I'm going to I'm going to make it public. So feel free to to tell me how you felt in while watching these games. That's that's a great idea. Thank you. And as always, stay comfy and stay classy. Bye.